Allison, let's kind of shift our gears beyond first-line therapy through lines of therapy. I do think we, as academic docs, tend to see a younger population, a probably better, more fit population. Mm -hmm. Where are we with, with options as we go down lines of therapy? So in a p patient that's had already 5-FU-based therapy first line, then we sequence usually to gem-based therapy, whether it can hopefully be gem, not paclitaxel, or gem alone, or gem cape, sometimes. Yeah. Um, not usually gem tarsiva. I don't think <laughs> we use that anymore. Um, but in the patients that do get um, gem nab first line, we do have liposomal irena tecan in combination with 5-FU as a standard option. And the uniqueness about the drug is the fact that it is this, the way it's engineered is that it really does deliver a potency, higher potency of SN38 to the cell because of the shell that the, the liposomal carboxymaltose formulation of this molecule gets in there. And uh, it gets in there and it's supposed to be less toxic. However, it can be toxic. Um, I've had a lot of patients, unfortunately, that have had um, higher rates of, of bone marrow suppression and diarrhea, but it is an effective regimen, second line, if you want to, and a lot of these patients may already have neuropathy, first yeah, line. Yeah. So it's a non-neuropathy non causing active second line option for them. So some response rates being recorded, you got to watch the toxic, I think it's a PK thing as well, the exposure. Right, right, and they, and they have to check, you have to check counts weekly yeah. on, on it. You can't just let, say, like full, theory come back in two weeks. Yeah. No. That's sort of where I was getting to with my deconstruction question before, is if you've done a gem nab, um, can you begin to deconstruct in lines of therapy, or is there something magic about the triplet uh, therapy? So you think this becomes a logical <coughs> second or third line choice? Yeah, I think it does become logical. I think the big thing is uh, when the you know, original trial was done, so you have the 5-FU um, uh, as, uh, you, uh, and the liposomal irinotecan, and then you had the liposomal irinotecan single agent, and then you had the 5-FU, so the single agent did not, you know, bin out. So if you want to, you know, I think if you had to administer it, it has to be with 5-FU and liposomal irinotecan. I think the big thing about giving this drug is that you should, uh, we just, you just need to talk to the patient about the toxicities, follow them very closely. And I think with that, you know, we've had success. So if you have to, but you really have to sit down and talk about supportive care with the patient about, about how, you know, what they can, toxicities they can expect, try to head off those toxicities like diarrhea. So I think that's very important. Uh, in a way, and once the patients are educated, they know what to do in cases of when they're trying to get into trouble to call or what to do exactly, I think they tend to do better. So, and then you can kind of try to adjust the dose or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, depending on the toxicity. So I think that's very important in education, education, education of the toxicities so that the patients can know what to expect and then they can probably stay on it for, get more benefit, clinical benefit from it. I mean, I think it's important that this, to recognize, this is the only high level randomized data that we have right. in the second. And so I think this is the evidence that you can deconstruct mm -hmm. and that after gem-based therapy that doing 5-FU, nanoliposomal green TCAN, that's, it, it should be the standard care. That should be what, every, what people are thinking of. It's not a comparison head-to-head -head versus regular non-liposomal non green mm -hmm. TCAN. Um, and so the, we, in terms of safety, the, compared to historical controls, it looks similar in terms of rates of diarrhea and neutropenia, which we know are classically what we think about for reunitecan as well. Um, but this is, you know, there have been other attempts to look at 5-FU and reunitecan or 5-FU and oxaliplatin, and this is the highest level of evidence that we yeah. have. Some of the FU oxaliplatin studies, in fact, negative in this yeah, space. It's when confusing when, some that look yeah. possibly similar and some that aren't. Yeah, and I'm always fascinated, uh, again, having lived through the taxane, the naked taxane trials um, with GEM, and then when we liposomally encapsulate taxane, all of a sudden we get some activity there. Um, and it would confess that, you know, you do some activity with regular arenatecan, but this is a different drug and maybe something that uh, penetrates tumor, as Allison was saying, better, so it targets tumor. Better. I mean, the, there's evidence that the PKs you have a greater um, average um, concentration that's delivered, and that seems to correlate with efficacy. You know, the peak amount of maximum amount of um, concentration of the um, SN38 that results seems to correlate with safety, but I think there is clearly evidence this is 
dose-wise lower dose than we traditionally give with regular renu yeah. um, And so I think there is evidence that this is a different drug because it's altering the, the peak. Yeah, you Californians are much cooler <laughs> and, and smoother about end of life stuff, right? So we East Coasters were panicked and in, in, in Texas. <laughs> you know.